Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop as we enter into the holiday season. George is in his hovel in Topanga Canyon because he's got <laughs> the flu. And our Quarantine guest tonight, zone. yes, is Jack Daniel. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> and the women go wild. <laughs> We got lots of great stuff to talk with him about. Uh, if you've got a question for him, throw it in the chat room right now. Somebody's watching it, and we'll get that question to him in a little bit. But right now, stay tuned, because we're going to talk with Jack about all the amazing stuff that he is doing right now on VoiceOver Body Shop. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together... From the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive, from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Good evening, or whatever time you're watching this. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. Who has a cold. And this is voiceover. Body shop. Or VO. BS. BS. Well, happy holidays to everybody as we get into the holiday season. Now we're... we're well, well, we'll be doing our tech talk next week uh, that you'll be able to watch. So we'll add a little bit of holiday cheer to that, I guess. Uh, but uh, right now, everybody's like thinking about what it is they need to get all the people they love or think they do. Uh, like Zycam. <laughs> Zycam, exactly. So you have the flu and that's why you're not with us tonight. Yes, I'm staying safely far, far away in my little hole in the canyon. Uh, I just thought it was the best idea for everyone. I've even had a, I've even had a client today who I did work for, but I did it remotely. I mean, I mean, like I had somebody else go there and physically do the work, and I just checked in. I'm like, "Yep, you, you did a good job on FaceTime," because <laughs> I, I couldn't go anywhere near her. She's pregnant too. On top of that, she's like, "I, you cannot go near me." I know, and unfortunately, so, yeah, and you're not infect, in, infecting the rest of the voiceover world tonight. So that's I know. Neither am I. Will neither will I be this week. So oh, that's good. Well, enjoy the wilderness. But I you're with us trying. now, anyway. Joining us now is our guest tonight, who's joining us from around the block. Uh, Jack Daniel joined us uh, here at, at VOBS a couple of years ago as our social media czar, and he came he came to Southern California intent on making an impact, and he has a splash. I you know, I, and I didn't I forgot my towel. Anyway, let's welcome Jack Daniel. He gets to come up here oh, and okay. sit down. <laughs> Well, hello. Welcome back it's good to, to see the you, clubhouse. Man. Things have changed a little Miss bit you guys. Since, yeah, since you were last here, but uh, you need to come visit more often. I definitely will try. Okay, good. We'll uh, talk money later. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> well, we did before, didn't we? Oh, anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah. you're, you're, you're now here in Southern California. Three years now? Uh, it'll be three years in March of in March. Next, this coming year. Oh. I, it'll be nine years that we've been doing this show in March, believe it or not. Wow. Yeah. It, pre it predates you. I mean, you were like in high school. But it didn't really take off until I joined the show. <laughs> oh, that's... So. 
you had an impact. It was important. Oh, so tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from and uh, how you got into voiceover. Well, I'm from the East Coast, like so many of us. Uh, I was born in Philly, and my family still live back there in South Jersey. Um, I was living in D.C. before I made the move out to California, but that was to the Bay Area. So I was in San Francisco for quite a while. What were you doing there? I was doing, actually, I was doing sketch comedy for a long time. I was in a traveling sketch comedy group. We'd go around the country and make the yucks. Um, and then uh, I was making a spectacularly poor living. And Acting, uh, acting, 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 that acting way. pays, just so you're clear. Acting I'd, pays. Yeah. Um, but I was having a good time with it. And I, I really like writing and performing in, in comedic work, so it was fun. I uh, then started doing sales because I'm like, I actually have to make some money. <laughs> so I took a job uh, in the in the, a startup in that whole Silicon Valley type thing and did that for quite a long time. And, you know, I did pretty well at it, but the acting thing kept coming back to me. And, and then I, you know, like so many of us, I heard about this voiceover thing and thought, well, that looks easy. I should just do that. And uh, easy is pie. yeah, of course it's, it's, uh, it looks easy and it, it, like anything else, it takes a lot of work and a lot of intention and a little bit of time. Yeah. And so I just started doing it. What, how did you, how did you start there? Cause I mean, there's a, there's a great voiceover community up in the Bay area. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't really know it. They see that yeah. I didn't really get to start learning or meeting people until I made them started to make the move here. So my focus was always toward LA. So once I made that decision, I started moving mentally toward LA about a year before I made the move. Uh, but you aimed, I did, yeah, you aimed high, man. I you didn't high. waste a lot of time networking in your old neighborhood. Well, what I was doing was, I think, the right approach. Anything I try to do in my life, I try to think who are the best at it and then find those people and then try to get them to deliver that knowledge to me, usually for money. Um, and I did that with Jody Gottlieb and Joyce Castellanos, uh, Dave Walsh, you know, some of the best coaches in the business, Harry Dunn. I just found all of those guys and said, I'm going to pay you guys to, sh you know, to t teach me how to do this stuff. Right. Because, you know, you just don't know what you don't know until you start working at it and hearing yourself and hearing how terrible you are. I'll tell you a quick story. What My, fir my first voiceover job or, or attempt at a job was um, when I went to, uh, I was on one of the pay to plays and I remember having my little, little crappy interface, my little crappy mic and my horrible setup thinking, I am going to nail this. And I'm going to just start, I'm just going to quit my job when, when the money starts rolling in. I mean, I was really thinking this way. And I remember the first feedback I got back, the guy gave me, it must have been voice one, two, three or something, but it said uh, one star. And I was like, what are you talking about one star? Don't you hate that? And then he wrote, what a bully. He just said, <laughs> he's, actually, I should thank him because he actually gave me feedback. And yeah. he said, your sound quality is terrible. You don't, you know, learn, learn to do what you're doing. And I was, of course, hurt because when you, somebody tells you the truth, it hurts, um, usually. Uh, but, um, and that's, that's when I decided, okay, I'm going about this wrong. You can't just think that you have a nice voice or whatever. You need to learn how to do this. Important lesson number Important one lesson. in voiceover. Yeah. It ain't about Many more failures were to come. Oh, okay. Well, you can tell us all <laughs> no, about no, those. No, 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 no. So when did you decide that LA was the place to be and what prompted you to I heard, a, and... I heard a Mamas and Papas song. And, no, that's not true. Yeah. I, um, I was, you know, doing this coaching stuff and, you know, you start to build relationships with people. Um, I came down for, I think it was VO Mastery in 2016, which was November of that year. And I just met so many people. I met one of my great idols, Joe Cipriano, um, who I, I'm honored to call a friend now. But people like him and, and Randy Thomas and uh, Debbie Derryberry, they were all there. Uh, I think I met you there. I think I met you there, there too. So that's that's right. I I, I went up to you and I said, "Hey, uh, uh, my name's Jack Daniel," and I said, "Oh yeah, I've seen you in the in the chat room." Mm -hmm. uh, but it was it was it was thrilling for me. Um, of course, now I know you. It's not as thrilling, but no, it's it's it was just wonderful. I mean, actually meeting these people, and I thought I got to be here. You know, this is where it's happening. Um, and so I just said, "Okay, I'm going to get myself together and make the move," and that's what I did in a few months. So you just packed up the van and Kinda. rolled down I-5? I, I had a few resources, not a lot. I, I was not a wealthy man, but I just thought, you know, I had a lot of faith in myself and I'm um, in a dream in my eye. And so I just got in the car, came down here, um, lived on the street for about six months. Oh, that's not true, actually. <laughs> I, I actually had uh, rented a place remotely. I never even saw the place. But the realtor was showed, showed me all these videos, and they never lie. So I of knew it was not. good. A realtor, and no, that's I actually the townhouse I live in now. You've seen it. You've it's been over. beautiful. It's gorgeous. Yeah. So I actually got very lucky in that in that event. And luck has always been a part of 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 my long 
long career. Well, you got to have a little bit of luck. You do. I mean, it's it, it. The thing is, is when opportunity and luck comes your way, you got to deliver. So you're saying pay off? Pay off? No, I'm oh. I'm saying it, it's a metaphor for oh, gotta deliver. deliver. Right. Yeah, deliver. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so what was your plan? Plan? <laughs> you're cute. Dad. Oh, I tried. <laughs> no, I honestly, I it, it wasn't so. I did have a plan, I guess, but it wasn't a, you know, like a one where I was like step one, step two. It was I'm if I'm going to be down here, I if there's an opportunity to do something that could you know increase my surface area with potential clients um, or people who could you know I could just meet with and talk to. I'm going to do that. That's my deal with myself if I'm going to make this trip. And that's hard for me because I'm actually a homebody. Wendy's here. She would tell you the same thing. Don't deny it. Um, I, I prefer to just stay home and, you know, watch a movie. But I was like, if I'm going to be here, I've got to have, I've got to take advantage of it. And so I did that quite a bit. You probably remember I was popping up everywhere because I was just relentlessly not, I don't know if I was aggressive, but I was certainly persistent. You, you made yourself known. <laughs> I made myself known. <laughs> Squeaky wheel. Yeah. Squeaky wheel. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, but when you walk into a room, everybody notices you because you're just a little bit taller than Seven everybody else. Seven feet five inches is not that tall, actually. Well. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, I just, I'm lucky because so many people have been welcoming and you just never know. You could hit people in the wrong, the wrong time, your timing's off, and then people just don't receive you in the same way. Right. I kind of got lucky this time. I've had many, many instances in my life where the timing wasn't there. This seemed to have been one of those things. And the city thus far seems to have been very welcoming to me. And I'm just grateful. Yeah. Now, you said you had limited resources. Now, to everybody out there who's like trying to get into the voiceover business, you know, I remember trying to get into the life insurance business. Mm -hmm. Can't do that when you're in debt. No. Can't be done. Mm -hmm. You had enough, you know, you had enough ramen noodles to survive while you were trying to get this all going. I, I wish I, I could I, say I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you the wrong way to do everything. Okay, good. That's what uh, I want to hear. You still get lucky. No, I really didn't. I came down here with some credit cards <coughs> and started loading them up. Uh, I mean, I was getting work. I must. I was very lucky. I, The first agency I went up toward, I managed to land a spot there and booked right away. So I, I did have a lot of luck and just whatever timing, whatnot. But um, I was filling up credit cards, um, just trying to get by. That first year was financially very challenging, um, but I didn't let anybody know, especially like girls I was dating, like Wendy. I was just like, no, I'm, I'm doing great. And, uh, you know, she didn't believe me. <laughs> no, but it was it was challenging, but I I just believed in myself. And I think you get to a certain point where you just you, you just kind of know in your bones that you're ready. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, you can call it arrogance or whatever. But from in my mind, that's where I was. Was I ready? In t terms of delivering the goods, in terms of being up to snuff, maybe not. I still had a lot of learning to do. I still have a lot of learning to do. We all do. Well, you never. You're still better prepared than those people that show up on those singing competitions who <laughs> feel in their heart that they are ready for television. Yeah. You don't got and it, dog. They're, com <laughs> they're completely. <laughs> Which is why I sold everything for the van that brought me to the show. <laughs> yeah. no. and I mean, there was kind of an element of that, George. It's, I did just get really lucky. So I'm thankful for that. You just got it. You have to have, I mean, there's a certain point where you just have to crank up the confidence. Yeah. I mean, you just have to truly believe that you can do this stuff because mm -hmm. if you don't believe it, nobody else is going to believe it. And that's the secret it's of voiceover. It's not whatever cockiness or whatever it is not it's 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 success it's success secrets yeah. and this is one of them it's mental when i mental. hear the greats in my mind people i really admire you know the, the the ashton smiths the scott rummels you know going back to ernie anderson or joseph all these people what i hear is absolute certainty and belief and they deliver that and there's just there's some kind of innate confidence they built it up because you know they deserve it they've they've worked for it um, but they just have that quality and it has to be absolute i think yeah. So what happened when you got here? I mean, you, you got an apartment. What did you do to really get yourself out there to let people know you were here? I started Aside going standing to... in their doorways. Yeah. And... <laughs> Lowry. <laughs> uh, but no, I went to every workshop I could. Um, the things like Mary, Mary Lynn Wisner has those meet the pros events. I believe they're called something else now, yeah. but that type of event where you can get in front of an agent, um, I would go to, I was lucky enough to make friends with Joyce Castellanos and Gene Cordes and 
they were teaching. So I would, they'd invite me to just come along and sit. Not hard to do. They are the nicest people. Uh, They're the nicest people in the world. And and they've always very, uh, they're one of my first connections in the city. And I'm very grateful for their friendship and love, but also what they've done for me. Um, people like Joe Sip. I mean, he had a workshop that changed my life. What did he do? He had a promo masters workshop, which was kind of funny because by no means was I a promo master, but you know, he had me audition for it and he said, you know what? You're no master. You never will be, but I'm going to let you know. <laughs> um, and I did, I went into the, into the workshop and met people like one of your guests, uh, Dan Nachtrob, who's since become a great friend of mine. Nachtrob. Probably one of the most influential people also in my career, because he is a fount of knowledge and he has shared it with me on the inside baseball stuff. It's like, here's what I, you got to know about the managers. Here's what you got to know about the agencies. And he has shared that information with me. And that is probably at least as valuable as anything about technique. Mm. So you met a lot of people mm-hmm. along the way. Yeah. Did being here in our clubhouse help at all? Clubhouse. Say more about this. <laughs> <laughs> I think I missed the cue earlier. <laughs> yeah. Um, absolutely. I mean, VOBS actually is one of the reasons I came down here. Um, I was, you know, lurking for a bit and watching the show. And I stole people like Paul Stefano you know, would help in the chat room. And I thought, well, I'd like to do that because I, I like to be a helpful person. Not in a solicitous way, but I, you know, sometimes people notice that if, if you stick your neck out and do things and say, you know, can I be helpful and mean it and actually not be a total jerk, which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't for me. But I did that and I started doing the chat room with you and thinking, well, this is fun. You know, you were a connection for me. I knew I knew you guys, which is also why I stalked you and moved a, a, a mile away. <laughs> No, I, di- I didn't know you were actually only going to be a mile away from me, which was actually great. Because you could, could literally here. walk here if you needed to. If I needed to. Yeah. Yeah. No, but you, you, the knowledge I got here technically and just seeing all the people talk about the way they got to make who they were, you know, get their career started. And especially people who came back and shows you where they were then more like Anthony Mendez. Yeah. Um, you know, he was very inspirational to me. So I just watching that, it made me think, you know, this is doable because these are just guys and girls like me. Um, I, I can do the things that they're talking about. And so I took that to heart and that helped me build my confidence. And which is one of the reasons I kept coming back to help out around here because it was so much fun for me. Yeah. Until you were too busy and then he just disappeared. And then I was just like, later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah remember us when, when, when you're a big star. Jim, Dave, I love you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's great. If you're wondering who we're talking to, he's been on camera with your, us before. Jack Daniel, who's, uh here in L.A. and doing really, really well. If you have a question for Jack, uh, because I know all of you out there want to be as successful as he is, and if you don't, you're in the wrong business, um, write it down. Put it in the, the chat room right now or on Facebook, wherever it is you're watching us live, and get that question in, and we will ask that question to him in the next segment. So uh, get that in there right now, wherever you're watching. So... Uh, what were some of the other successful strategies you employed? Now, obviously, just getting better at what you do. But yeah. w- you had the opportunities. You got into a lot of people's studios, I imagine. And what, what went on in there when suddenly you're like, give us what you got? Um, I'm just you know, I'm trying to come up with a convincing and interesting answer. And I'm not going to pull that out of my... I'm not going to say the word I was just going to say. Um, I think you can. It's, it's, <laughs> this oh, is right. not a children's show. Yeah, we but my, my mother's going of... to watch this. And oh, so okay, never mind. She doesn't even right. think I curse. Okay. That's also not true. <laughs> um, I think, honestly, I just uh, took advantage of opportunities when they, when they came up. I went to all these workshops. I, you know, I had my best foot forward. But every time I did have a job, and at first they weren't that often, and then it would become more increasingly so, and I'd start to get repeat business, I've always believed that, and I take this from my sales background, or just client service background, you know, I'm very conscientious and, um, you know, I could be a total jerk in every other way. Just don't start talking, Wendy. But I, what I, when I'm talking to a client <laughs> or to my agent or my manager, um, I believe truly in customer service, you know, the service mindset. So when they ask me for something, I'll give it to them plus, you know, I'll just, I'll do a little bit more, you know, maybe if I, if I did a session and it was directed by phone patch or something, you know, I'll do the, I'll do some cuts for them. I'll make sure that it's okay. Um, if they don't just want the, you know, the file or I'll just try to think what else I can do. If, if at the end of the session, they say, is there anything else you can think of that you'd like to try? I always say yes. Even if I don't have an idea, I'll say, Hey, I don't actually have a, uh, something I, that's coming to mind, but do you mind if I just do a couple more runs and, and see if something pops out? 
And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but it's the willingness to, to work and play with them right. that they, they appreciate. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's really important. Uh, I found that you want to be original, you want to be different from everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, but when you get that opportunity, you got to show them what you got. You got to show them what you got. And, uh, and, but then realize that, as you were saying, it's not about showing them how good you are. It's really more about showing them who you are. And more importantly, that you are there to serve them, that you are there to give them what they need. Yeah. I mean, it's all about service, right? You know, right. you're there to, to, we're like the last thing on their list. You know, when, by the time they've cut up all their spots, you know, the voiceover is just an, almost an uh, afterthought. And so you you just got to be able to deliver it quickly and surely and give them what they want and maybe something else, but at least give them exactly what they want and not let your ego come in. Like I never say, you know what, I, you really want to try it this way. I may ask them if they'd like to try right. something different, but I am there to fill a need and hopefully I can do that each time quickly and professionally and get out because they have no time at all. These guys are so har- harried. You know, the women and men I work for, um, you know, uh, to do like say trailers or promo they have no time in the, at all and yeah. so they they're like if they if you get, get directed, it in, get it done which is rare and get it out right th- these days almost everything's done wild but you know if you're in a session they've got maybe five minutes and they're just hey can you do this can you do this okay now try that um and do less now and then you're done yeah. you know yeah have you had any situations where you're like in a studio working on something and then somebody comes in the back door of the of the booth and says we got something else can you do this oh yeah yeah, that happens uh, pretty often. In fact, it, it happened recently. Um, I was doing a spot for Ford versus Ferrari with, with this is very unusual, with uh, one trailer house. Yeah. And <laughs> the odd thing is, while we were that we were on, um, what do they call it? Fiber. They were, yeah. they were on fiber. And all of a sudden, they're like, one sec, Jack. I'll be right back. And so uh, this guy, Zach, he's a great guy. He comes back on. He says, well, this is a little unusual, but... Um, the studio wants to know if you'll read another spot, but it's not our spot. Right. It's actually for another trailer house, but they just decided they want your voice on it. So we're, we're, we're all here. Everybody's together. Is that okay with you? I'm like, it's okay with me. Right. <laughs> it's like, right. Are you okay with it? He's like, of course we're fine. You know, it's more collegial. I think sometimes than people think, even though they're all competing with each other, they all know each other and they're friends. Right. But I thought it was very unusual, you know, for that sort of thing to happen. Yeah. What's really fun is when they say, oh, and this is how much we're paying you for this extra spot. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny. You know, you can be, it can be very surprising. You can do four minutes of work and be very surprised at the number that comes up. Yeah. Um, and then other times you're in there for two hours and you're very surprised in another way when the number <laughs> comes up. But I, I do, you know, I don't really, uh, I'm not in a position to say no. I know many talents who are in that blessed position where they can say, no, that's not for me. You know, I pretty much do whatever comes down the, you know, sizzle reels. I do uh, corporate stuff. Um, I love doing commercials and all. Class A pays well. Trailer pays well. Um, promo pays. It's it's not like big money, but it's all about, you but know, it's consistent. tags. And, yeah. Right, yeah. I'll do, I'll do whatever because I'm always trying to increase my skill set and because I'm loving it. And I'm, right. you know, for me, it's still relatively new. Yeah. So one of the things that kept you from us is suddenly you were on call. What yes. was that? What was what's that like, and what's that all about? When I joined up with uh, Jason Helsner, who's my manager, um, basically the thing that became important was I had to be available usually later in the day, uh, say from like uh, it changes. It could be in the morning too, but it usually from late afternoon, sometimes through eight thirty, nine o'clock at night. Um, he'll get something. It if I'm, we're on a campaign together, then it could just be they've completely changed the spot. Now you got to do right. it again, um, or it's just you know they just need to uh, do a bunch of tags for this. Or it might be an audition for a new spot. You know, it's like, okay, these guys are looking for a new voice for this. Can you get this back to me in 20 minutes? Right. And so I pretty much have to be near my studio. Um, even though technically I'm near my studio, when I'm here, it's about being, it's it's about getting it turned around quickly. Right. And if I'm going to have a good chance at whatever it is we're going after, my deal with myself again, I'm always making these deals with myself and I always come out on, on the bottom of these deals. Somehow. <laughs> but uh, I just thought, you know, I'm going to be available. I'm going to be at least one of the guys who's there to say yes when everyone else isn't available. Right. Once again, our guest is Jack Daniel, not the Tennessee sipping whiskey, but sorry to disappoint if that's what you're here but for. But he's just as smooth. So uh, <laughs> uh, if you've got a question for Jack uh, about that was smooth. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, so if, if you've got a question for Jack, again, throw it in the chat room right now. Somebody's watching it. George is watching it. Sue, our amazing technical director, is watching it. And uh, we yep, will get that I'm question too. What's that? Yep, I'm watching it. Well, keep an eye on that. <laughs> <laughs> George, how you doing, man? I'm just trying to literally copy and paste a single line of text into Google Drive right now. <laughs> So it's 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 a great night. <laughs> How much medication are you on exactly? You could be <laughs> not enough. <laughs> not enough. Well, that's that's what's really important. Um, so let me ask you this one: mm -hmm. of all the things that you did try, you said some things didn't work. What were some things? Because I'm sure people are wondering, what are some strategies that don't work when you're trying to really establish establish yourself? in a new place. Blackmail. I mean, I tried that from the get-go and it just took me nowhere. It worked for me. <laughs> um, you know, I, keep, keep in mind, you know, I, I've had this other career and so I'm, I'm coming at this different from some of, of the younger viewers here right. who may not have had, you know, a lot of life in the corporate world. So I do bring a lot of those skills t to bear and I think that has given me a leg up. Um, uh, you, you will learn these things if you are one of said younger folks yeah. well sales is really really it's important really important yeah you know? it's also it's like you learn what not to sell as well as how to you how, how to sell by not saying anything right um but just you learn some of the skills about client service um and how to be top of mind for folks without being incredibly annoying um just the level of annoying you see here plus one <laughs> but i'm trying to think you, you asked me a specific question yes um things that didn't work uh, everything I've done has just been gold. So I just don't know how to smell it. <laughs> Clearly it has. I mean. Now, I, I really, it sounds evasive, but the truth is I just, I was lucky in in my timing in some ways. I wish I'd started earlier, but the fact that I started when I did, I've, I've, uh, I'm bringing all these life skills to bear and I think it has helped me tremendously. Yeah. How old are you now? 52. 52. The guy doesn't look a day over 25. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's not that smooth, and I don't believe you. 26. 26. Okay. Uh, that's very kind of you. Well, again, Jack Daniel is our guest. You're also a gear geek. I love it. Tell us about, I mean, I've been to your, I've seen your booth. I've been in mm. there. I've talked on your U87. and I don't have that anymore. You, you got rid of it. Good boy. It. Good boy. And the reason I did that, Dan, is because I have um, a smaller booth. Mine's five by four. Right. And the U87 doesn't want to be in that room. No, it needs to be in a yeah. big studio, yeah. which is yeah. what it's for. And I take a lot of the booth up already because I'm kind of a big guy. And the U87 just sounded like it was caged because it was so boxy and beautiful, Mike. I, I really love the mics because I use them sometimes when I go to studios. But I ended up selling that. Uh, what I do have is a 416, which I use all the time. Um, but for those instances where I'm doing a narration or something that requires less of an incisive punch, I will use a Geffel um, UMT 70S. Mm -hmm. Nice mic. Really yeah. nice mic. And it's one of the few large condenser mics that actually uh, sounds good in a box. So that's that's been a, a real a plus for me. Yeah. I use an Avalon M5 as my preamp. Um, I use universal uh, interface equipment. Uh, all Megami cabling. I'm into the Megami. Um, what else do like I have? Like it makes a difference. Just point A to point B. Yeah, but I can say I have Megami cable and that's all I really care about. Uh, yeah, really. You I got to put, put that on your resume, Megami cable. Yeah. It's no, it, it, it makes uh, pretty much no difference at all, but uh, I, I think it'll probably last longer maybe than a, than a cheaper cable, but they're all pretty good these days. You don't need to spend up. Right. And if you got a soldering gun, no problem. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm not the it's handiest just... guy in the world. Though. The... <laughs> I may be like kind of a, into the tech, but I'm not a handy guy. Yeah. Now you've 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 got an Avalon, as I recall, uh, the M5, the yes. solid state. Yeah. Do, yeah. do you like that, and why do you like that? I like it because I find that it it helps me. It, it, it's all about what makes you feel good. Because in the end, you can use almost any interface over a hundred dollars and do professional work. Right. You know, it's not going to change the way you read copy. It's not, but it makes me feel a certain way, and you know, so that the sound that it has, um, I think matches well with a four sixteen. Um, trying to counter, not counter, but complement the fact, you know, I live kind of in, in the lower s spectrum of sound. So I need to make sure that all the uh, the higher bits are being picked up faithfully, you right. know, giving me more articulation, more incisiveness. That's why I like that combination. I feel like the Avalon is bright and three-dimensional to me. I, it sounds 3D. When I got that, 
it really did sound different to me from say the the the, the built-in preamp in the in the universal audio that I had. Right. Does it matter in terms of what people are hearing in the other end? Probably not. Yeah. But for me, I loved how it sounded, so it makes me feel strong. Yeah. George, your thoughts on that? It's like your Samson's hair. Exactly. George knows because he sets up my equipment, so <laughs> he knows exactly what I have. A lot of this gear is like Samson's hair at the end of the day. It really is. I mean, if it makes it's uh, it's the reason people buy expensive cars. It's the reason they buy nice clothes. It just you know. It just I got an expensive car up because I it makes me sound better. That's why I did that. <laughs> right when you record in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's just, it is one of those things like it, uh, when you get to a certain point, there's, there's some people that get joy in what they can get away with. Mm -hmm. And that's fun too. That can be fun like that. You know, when you're working remotely, of course, is one of those kind of situations. Yeah. But other than when you're in the safety of your own studio and just having, knowing absolutely for sure, you've done everything you can possibly do to get a great sound yeah. and you like the way you sound on it. Um, especially in the kind of work you're doing, you know, it, it can make a difference. And I am, I am hearing, I'm hearing more now that they're actually, they're actually, people are actually inquiring about gear that's being used in the home studio. Have you found that to be the case at all? Inquiring about? Like, yeah. What they, are you using? Are you're you're a success. Always, what are you using? Always. I know. Are the yeah. talent, I mean, uh, are the cast, uh, casting or studio, oh. anybody ever asking like, hey, what gear you got in there? Not Is much. I mean, if I'm, them? if I'm waiting for like the, the, the producer to come in or the CD or whatever, and I'm just talking to the engineer, then maybe, you know, we'll start. To, that's a good conversation to have after you've done the weather and all that. Um, they're, they're interested for sure. But I don't think yeah. people are generally all that interested in what you have. As long as it does it sound good, then it's just like, OK, are you doing what I need you to do? That's all they're hearing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's good on the other end. Yeah. Like we can't tell what you got. I mean, yeah, you're using a realistic, you know, electric condenser mic, yeah. but you sound great. Right. Yeah. They don't really care. Once again, Jack Daniel is your guest. We're going to take a break and figure out uh, what else we're going to talk about. So stay tuned here on voiceover body shop. We'll be right back with Jack Daniel. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane, the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the voiceover body shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Question. What's the biggest challenge you have with voiceover? What's been the puzzle you need to solve? The question you need answered. Well, David H. Lawrence the 17th and the coaching team at VOHeroes.com want to know. As we head into the new year, they're planning new courses and new training, and they want to find out what you need most. And it's easy to let him know. Just drop him an email at david at voheroes.com and let him know what you'd like to know. Is it tech-oriented? Is it about auditioning? Is it about booking more work, finding an agent, podcasting, audiobooks, performance questions? Whatever that one thing is that keeps you up at night, that makes you scratch your head, or that you've always wanted to know about success in VO, email David and ask. The email address again is david at voheroes.com. That's david at voheroes.com. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. 
and it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem, VOBS.TV. All right. I had a chance to shave. You look great, by the way. I know. And change the shirt. You missed a little right here. Right there? Okay. Well, anyway, we're talking with Jack Daniel uh, about what it takes to, like, pick yourself up from wherever it was that you were. (laughs) <laughs> the bathroom floor at Macy's, yes. downtown San Francisco. <laughs> and you find yourself here in L.A. and uh, and doing pretty well. And uh, I mean, so are there any projects that you're working on now that you could you haven't signed an NDA you can tell us about? Or There's not too many NDAs uh, other than with commercial work. And I don't really do much with games. But um, uh, there is a couple of trailer things I'm working on, which I really can't. I don't think I'm supposed to, t- to really talk about. Um, but I do uh, the uh, investigation discovery. I'm continuing to narrate the show, uh, cool. Murder Loves Company. So that's really fun. Yeah. Um, speaking of great coaches, I should I should drop it. A Tom Pinto is probably one of the absolute best narration <laughs> yeah. coaches I've I've ever met. But uh, he's I worked with him a lot. I continue to work with people like him and Dave Walsh and uh, Harry Dunn. I just I find their help invaluable. Well, it's not invaluable. They do value it and they make me pay them. So yeah. yeah. But it's worth every penny. It's worth every penny. And you, you know what? You, you had asked me before about uh, things that didn't work and did work. And I should mention that one of my favorite things to do that I continue to do all the time, and I think has been very helpful, is I go to the websites, the manager sites, the agency sites, um, and I just listen to people. And I listen very actively. I sit there and I take notes. And then I go into the booth and I try to replicate what I'm hearing. Um that helps me to say, why is this person doing so well? And how would that approach sound with my voice? And, I, you know, it gives me some insights from time to time. That'll work for in a lot of ways, but it's not as good as having someone else say, yeah, but, and then somebody who knows what they're talking about to help you, you know, put that in perspective. But I do think if in terms of zero cost um, and just uh, expanding your, your horizons in as uh, cheap a way and as easy a way as possible, that's one. Is just mm-hmm. to, to go to the sites and yeah. listen. So in other words, do your homework. Do your homework. Sounds I could good. have just said that, but then... You know. No, it sounded much better the way you said it. The <laughs> tone was just right and everything. So, George, we have a few questions from our voluminous audience out there. Yeah, they actually are. Um, first one comes from John Keeney. Um, John. He said, hey, ask him about his morning coffee ritual. <laughs> <laughs> John knows me, so this is a bit of a loaded question, but uh, I'm kind of like a monk when it comes to my coffee. Um, I have a very particular, a very particular set of skills. I have, I have a very particular machine, a very particular. Uh, Wendy, what, what, Wendy will tell the same thing. What, what machine do you have? It is the uh, uh, Mocha Master. It's it's from uh, uh, Holland hmm. or the the Netherlands, as Paul Strickwater would make okay. us say. Um, it's a fantastic machine. It's built like a tank, and it. it Puts, it heats the water up at the exact right temperature. I have a grinder that's very particular. Um, I'm just very, it has to be just so. And I really love my coffee. I don't drink tons of coffee, but in the morning, that's how I like to start my day with some reading and some coffee. Uh, don't talk to me don't, before I, the coffee's happening. I, I completely relate to that. <laughs> I've got my Jura Compresso. I just press the button. It grinds the beans, makes the coffee. And... I need the ritual of putting it together and... Or so causing, like rolling, causing like, it to be know. put together. Yeah. Like, Wendy. <laughs> I grind mine in a neutral bullet and then use an arrow press. <laughs> a little <laughs> ghetto. Because but... he can. But that's, <laughs> that's kind of the uh, engineer's approach, isn't it, though? You're, you're kludging it. I love it. It, 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 it. And fast as humanly possible. And fast as humanly possible. Yeah. 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 Got a great question Get. here from Get Fred's Voice. Fred North. Yes. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, Fred's a great guy. Uh, he says... Do you think you would have come close to the same level of success if you were still in Philly? 
Probably not. Um, although I would have access to New York. Yeah. Um, so there's there's stuff going on in Philly for sure. I mean, Paul Stefano's out there, and I know there's some great studios there. It's just that it's not a hub for, for the business, certainly not for, for trailer work and, right. and promo work. Um, you can do a lot in New York, and a lot of people do, but I'm, I think for to do what I have wanted to do, this was pretty important for me. And I do get that question from folks a lot. How can I do it from my place in, in, in Oregon or, or West Virginia? It's like, I don't think it's impossible, and it's becoming more and more possible, but for people to get to know you, and it is still a business of relationships. And, you've got to do it face yeah, to face. You've, you've got to, you've got, they, they respect getting to know you. Who am I working with? People want to work with people they know and like. Right. So that is part of the job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kim, because Kim uh, followed it up saying, uh, well, you know, it's basically a tag on to that saying, let alone anywhere else other than L.A. But yeah, yeah. like you said, it doesn't really change the answer. It's it's relationships. Yeah. And, and especially in anything that's Hollywood or Hollywood tangentially related, it's Animation, super relationshipy. Trailer, probably not. But uh, yeah. certainly for uh, commercial work, you can you can definitely... Uh, uh, find that anywhere you can do narration a lot almost everywhere and you get people like the mark riders who's in florida um tom pinto who's in the bay area of course they they're kind of established talents so that also makes it a lot easier for them they're a known quantity but i think once you get known you yeah you could probably make a move uh, if people trust tom you. kane wherever tom, tom kane, kane is fabulous talent. <laughs> yeah no no nowhere um Ryan jay horace black yeah yeah absolutely um, knowing that you now know and have learned from trial and error, what top three things would you do if you're approaching the LA market or VO in general? Like, you know, some coaches you'd train with. You mentioned coaches earlier, but I did a couple. Heavy duty I guess name he, drop he wants there, to right? have all of the secrets in three quick answers. <laughs> I, I, I name drop those people, not, not because they, you know, they've asked me to, but more because they'll kill me if I don't know. Yeah. Actually, it's because yeah. I believe in them. Um, I, some people have a poo-poo attitude toward coaching. I think if you're coming from a place where you don't already have some expertise in, in the craft of voiceover, it's absolutely imperative to short circuit or, or not short circuit. That's the wrong word. Shortcut. To, yeah. Shortcut. Thank you. To shortcut yeah. your way. It's going to save you so much time to, to talk to people who know what they're doing. For two reasons, they'll give you, they'll help you with your skills. You know, if you have the talent, they will develop it for you. But also, they will give you inside knowledge, and that was at least as important as learning the skills. Is like, how does this business work? Because you can go to all the websites and you read all the books, but you still don't feel like you know what's happening. You know, it's like, so what do I do exactly when I'm in a session? Or you know, and you, and you go to Facebook and you hear ten different. You guys talk about this with with tech. You hear ten different answers, and they're all different. And you don't know who's who's knows and who's just pretending to know and well, and everyone's yeah. trying. But I think you really need to talk to the people who know. So I'll, number one, I would say if you, three things. I would find the best uh, the people who are putting their services out there. Um, you know, ask questions about them. Ask people who you admire. Um, you know, would you go, would you study with this person and why? Because um, most people are, are willing to share if you ask nicely and you aren't a total jerk. Um, that said, I have gotten requests from people like, uh, this is a real thing too. Some guy goes, Hey, my daughter really, I don't know if he talks like this, but he should. My daughter is really into the voiceover. I'm pretty sure she's really, really good. Uh, what do I do? Yeah. I said, well, number one, here's what I, and I gave him this long email, you know, act, asking about acting and, you know, what I would do for coaching. Absolutely no response after that. Right. You know, and, and that happens a lot. People say, Oh, you have to do, you have to do work. No, that's not oh, for me. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's why they call it work. I was going to say voiceover. Yeah. I think. <laughs> well, you mentioned Tom Tom uh, Pinto a bit ago. He just had a compliment. He said, um, you're the consummate pro, always with the greatest attitude besides your great voice um, and your work ethic. It's a big part of your success. Wow. Everyone wants to work with you. That is. That's what Tom said. Tom Pinto, that, that means a lot to that me. That is high praise indeed. Yeah, it really is. Thank you, Tom. Uh, and one last question, question. Um, another one from Jay Horace Black. Um, do you have the same uh, VO booth, or did you get a new booth from the one we discussed a while back? If you no, can remember, I, I same booth I had. I caused to be made when I, as soon as I moved down here, um, I had uh, uh, Scott Peterson build me one of his booths. So uh -huh. it's a double walled booth. Um, so it's it's in terms of uh, is is it a beautiful booth? Not, not as beautiful as some. Not like a studio bricks, but does it work? Absolutely. I I use it all the time and. I actually hinted to to Wendy that I was considering buying a studio bricks, and she's like, "For what?" 
and I had no good answer. He's like, other than it's cool. And so I probably will stick with this booth for some yeah. time. Yeah. You keep mentioning Wendy, who's also a voice, oh, a voice talent. She is also a voice talent. Why don't you talent. give us the old, uh, there she is. Wait. Hey, hello, Wendy. All right. Hello. Way down there. <laughs> Makes this place look so huge, doesn't it? It really does. It's palatial, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, like like the palace we have behind <laughs> us here. This the, is actually the the Hungarian Parliament building. But... I was greeted by the North Face usher when I walked in. It was very polite. <laughs> Should give him a raise. We 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 we're, we're planning on it. You know, it's, you know, we're we're going to change the you know the entire look in here. It's going to look like this restaurant in Budapest. It's like gargoyles and all sorts of things, but. Yeah, I was I was talking to my manager recently. I said we should raise my rate. He's like, I'm planning on it <laughs> at some point. That's that's the kind of manager you want. <laughs> I'm like, ah, it's not going to happen. You know, anyway, so Jack, it's been great having you here. A pleasure. It's 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 like coming home, but with no food. <laughs> Thanks, There's <Jack>. food. <laughs> Of a type. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we don't have like a turkey dinner out here, but you know, yeah. Christmas isn't until next week. Well, and thanks for having me, Dan. It's, it's been wonderful to see you again. It's always a pleasure to, on the to show, see you, man. you know, and we'll, I know, I know we'll probably see each other Wednesday night at the voiceover that's collective true. We, party. We, we absolutely will. It's going to be a blast. Yeah. And now that's a great party. You know, if you're here in the LA area, join the voiceover collective, you know, Jay and Tim are going to just love me telling, saying this, but. We have this. Yeah. We have this great party every year. The you know even at my advanced age, it's still like, am I at a fraternity party or something? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can never get out because everyone. Hey, Dan, how you doing? Hey, it's like you try to get to the door, and you can't, and you're stuck there for the rest of the night. Well, you're a factor, as they say. You're a factor in the VO world. A factor. Yeah. I I was told there would be no math. <laughs> never any math. Always causing division. Over. Anyway, Jack. Hello, everyone. I said hi. Yeah, absolutely. George, I'm sorry you're not here in person, but I'm also glad because I don't want to get sick. Yeah. Me but too. I, but right? I miss you, man. I'll, I'm sure I'll see you. I won't see you Wednesday. No, no. Yeah, he'll just phone it in. All right. All right. Jack Daniels been our guest. Thanks for joining us. George and I'll be right back to uh, wrap things up right after this. This is Anthony Mendez, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Show. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services, while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Source Elements, those are the creators of Source Connect. That is a software that voice acting pros are being demanded to have in their home studios by the commercial studios of the world. How do I know this? Well, I've set up software for everybody on every platform and in every scenario you can imagine, and this is the one that people are being requested to get. It's a standalone application, doesn't run on a Google Chrome browser. So you have a lot more stability involved. And this software has been tried and true, tested, improved the whole nine for well over 10 years now. So if you really want to be establishing a business in voiceover that works with the top studios in the world, top agents, that kind of thing, make sure you have Source Connect locked and loaded in your studio. Absolutely important. Go get a 15-day free trial at Source dash elements.com 15 day free trial you don't need an iLock little usb dongly thing to get set up with source connect standard right away so go give it a try and tell them we sent you we'll be right back right after this and now it's time to talk about our good friend harlan hogan and voiceover essentials and you know it's the holiday season and you know if you're a voice actor there's certain things that perhaps you really need to have yeah, you got to have a good microphone. You got to have a good booth. But 
you also have to have a quiet place to work. And one of the ways you can keep your home quiet is by having one of the greatest inventions of all time from Harlan Hogan, and that is the Harlan Hogan voice over recording sign. And here's mine over here. Uh, you can see it on, on the wall. And I can. it has a great little remote. I can change the colors. I can change all sorts of... It'll change... Look, at, watch this. It, it, it will slowly change to another color. And you put it on the door of your studio. And you can have, like, color codes and all sorts of stuff. Like, it's like, well, all right, if it's flashing yellow or if it's flashing orange or whatever, that means I'm recording. Stay out of here. Be quiet. So... Check this out. Now is the time to get one of these things because you only have a couple of days until Christmas. And if you want to buy them, buy them now because he's got them in stock and you can get it delivered before Santa has to drop it down the chimney or leave it underneath your, your menorah or whatever. Or actually tell your spouse or your significant other that this is what you want. Or if they're watching, this is what he or she wants. Get yourself a Harlan Hogan voiceover recording sign with the little remote that it comes with, and it will allow you to control your destiny as far as sound goes in your booth. Thanks, Harlan, for being our sponsor here for almost nine years on VoiceOver Body Shop. Go buy one of these things. Go over to his, his website, voiceoveressentials.com, and buy everything. It'll make him happy. It'll make us happy. But most important, it'll make you happy. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services, while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected Expected talents, coaches, and industry insiders. When you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Ooh, I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beetle body shop. Now we're back on voiceover body shop. Uh, George, you feeling any better after you know not having to be here for for a little bit? Oh uh, well, it's uh, you know I don't know who else has had this flu, but you'll feel good parts of the time and not so great others. But the cough, the coffee did help kick things up a little bit. But I'm hanging in there. I'm gonna be better by Christmas. One way or the other. Darn well better be. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, it, it, having the flu sucks. Get a flu shot, you know, and you while well, you still can, because I hear it's going to be a bad flu season. But uh, but fortunately, you're not here to spread it here. So, uh, but again, you're, you, you're doing what you got to do. Um, next week on this show, and we're about to record it, Tech Talk 23. I don't know how it is that we've come up with stuff to talk about each week for almost nine years, but we're going to try and do that again. So uh, make sure if, you know, I mean, you're going to be dealing with relatives and making dinner and all that other stuff, have us on in the background and learn about tech. I think that'd be a great way to spend your holiday week. Don't you? All right. Indeed. Yes. And then uh, we're not exactly sure what we're going to do on the 30th. Uh, but we're going to do a show between Christmas and New Year's, and uh, we'll come up with something. I don't know. We'll think of Maybe it. it could be somewhat party-like. It, it it really should be. Uh, but next year, we're thinking about, you know, Elaine Clark wants to be with us, Joe Cipriano, and, and a bunch of other guys who and gals who've been on the show before but are just big-time people and have gotten even bigger. So we'll get them on the show uh, next uh, next year as well. Plus, we also want to do some roundtables. So if you've got any suggestions for roundtables, tell us about them. I mean, we want to do a tech roundtable, but we're, we're talking about doing one on demos and a number of other things. So we've got some big plans for 2020. And we're yeah, show us what you want to see next year. 
you know, t- round tables for sure. We haven't done any in a while. So, but you know, we want to hear from you guys. If t- round tables is something you want to do or want to hear uh, from, uh, then tell us. They're, they're more work to produce. You know, we got to cast a bunch of people, line it all up. So, but we want to do them because we think, we think you guys learn as much as, if not more, from them. Absolutely. Uh, we have a round table of, of experts. Yeah. So let us know. Yeah. But what's most important is they always agree with us. So, uh, <laughs> Who are our donors of the week? Yes, the donors. Uh, let's head over to my notes and read those to you. Here we go. Michael Kearns, uh, Rob Ryder. Ryder. Almost said Reiner, but I'm sure he's heard <laughs> that before. Um, Christy Burns, Joseph Harrison, Brian Rausch, Graham Spicer up in the Great White North, Antland Productions, Uncle um, Roy, Coast, Michelle Blanker. And Sarah Borges. All Thank you, right. everybody. Yeah. You guys have all donated repeatedly on our show. Some of you for several or, <laughs> dare I say, many years. Many years. Uh, it's incredibly appreciated. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And uh, there's a donate button right on our website if you're there. It says, donate now. Couldn't be any easier. Uh, also, we'd love you to join our mailing list, uh, which is up to about, 624 we want to hit a thousand by the end of the year uh, so tell everyone you know to sign up on our mailing list because then you know who exactly who's going to be on because i usually will send that out uh, an announcement who's going to be on the show and and then you'll know and you're like well does something cool. happen like do we get a uh like a a, a a stone plaque that we hang on the wall like the ten commandments for yeah. getting a thousand mailing list subscribers yeah it, actually it's it's a, it's a gold uh newsletter it's like the it's like yeah. the youtube play button you know for a million views but absolutely it's absolutely um hey and show us your booths this week we didn't have a booth what we have here is the hungarian parliament there might be a booth somewhere in there I've, listen you know, <laughs> there were there were fascinating things in the hungarian parliament that you wouldn't think about like we're wandering through there on this tour and there are these large gold or brass trays in the windows with little curves that cuts in them with numbers. And, and, you know, Marcy's like, what do you think those were for? And I thought about it. I said, they're cigar holders because the guys would come out of legislation and they would put their cigars down and their cigars were, and they were numbered. And so they wouldn't get it mixed up. That's right. So when the tour guide came back out, I said, cigar trees. Yes. And they were, I was absolutely correct. <laughs> I'd never seen that before, but I, I understood what that w- probably was. So uh, interesting. But it is a beautiful building. But if you want to show us your booth, even if it's not quite this ornate, uh, send them to us at uh, the guys at VOBS and make sure you send them in landscape. Landscape. Not portrait. I don't know. Everybody takes pictures in portrait. I yes, this is not TikTok. This is... A web stream. It's not TikTok. So give us us a widescreen, please. Exactly. Uh, Hey, and if you want to be in our studio like this huge audience we have tonight of, of, you know, nobody. uh, Well, Wendy was here for a bit. But uh, write to us again at the uh, the, the boys, the guys at VOBS.TV. And if you're in the greater Los Angeles area or if you live here in the Valley and it's easy for you to get here, we'd love you to have you here. Uh, We're here at 5 o'clock every other Monday night. And... uh, We'd love to have a live audience. It helps a whole lot in here. Um, also, we need to thank our amazing sponsors because they, they're they the ones that really make it happen, aside from you and me and Sue, of course. Uh, but, uh, for example, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Uh, VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. Voice Actor Websites. Uh, and J. Michael Collins demos. All right. And of course, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of live and recorded webcasting. Uh, and uh, thanks to uh, Sue Merlino, who did a great job of of making sure that everything works perfectly. She presses mm-hmm. that button. She presses that button. And somehow we miraculously appear on your computer screen or wherever it is you're watching this. Uh, so thanks to her. And of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Feel better, George. Uh, Thanks, guys. And we'll we'll see you next week. But enjoy this show. This was a great interview with Jack Daniel. 
and we'll see you next time.